Welcome to Investment 360. Joining us now from Cape Town is Katie's Asset Management Portfolio Manager, Bronwyn Blood. We're talking fixed income and in particular her Absolute Yield Fund, which was a Morningstar Award winner last year. Of course, still with me is Wayne McCurry from Momentum Asset Management. Bronwyn, thank you so very much for joining us. Great to have you on the program. I think let's start off by putting Hi. things in, in context. And uh, given the fact that we're seeing drama playing out in Europe, uh, growth concerns on a global level, and here in South Africa, interest rates unchanged, still sitting at 30 year lows put it into context for us what is your investment philosophy at this point well one of the things that we've seen playing out from the eurozone crisis is excessive volatility in the bond market which obviously has an impact on fixed income funds and how we see that is basically what one of the objectives of this fund is to minimize volatility for our investors so we have been reducing the interest rate risk in the fund also what's happened is you know, when there is volatility, there's also opportunities in the bond market. And what we've seen is credit spreads blowing out um, offshore, which has enabled us to purchase offshore bonds at very wide credit spreads, which has bought enhanced yield for the fund um, at the same time. Bronwyn, what, when did you, I mean, as a related question, when did you go overseas and what sort of your strategic exposure to global fixed interest uh, in, in your fund and in specifically on the credit, how much of that global credit is in, how much of that global bond is in credit? Well, I, I mean, I think since we last spoke, um, we had a very extremely low weight and we, we weren't targeting offshore um, corporate bonds. And we've upweighted that exposure to about 15% in the fund now. Um, we've just taken opportunities where we've seen offshore credit, credit spreads blowing out I mean, I have to stress that it is always issuers that we know locally that have issued in the offshore market, and we find opportunities there to enhance the fund's yield. So it is um, normally local issuers like Anglo-American, um, SAB, those types of names that we know um, well from a credit perspective locally. Um, and there has been op opportunity to pick up enhanced yield pickup mm -hmm. in the offshore market. Yeah. Continue, Bronwyn. Yeah. No, I mean, and also, you know, what we've done is we've hedged out any currency risk. So what we'll do with that bond is overlay cross currency swaps to take out any offshore currency exposure. So it, all our investments are RAND denominated. There is no currency risk in the fund. Mm. <coughs> when you when you look at the fund, Bronwyn, you've got a 11% in inflation linked bonds. What's your view on the asset class? And you could even ask why so low. Um, actually, you know, if, you'll, if you look at the fund's benchmark, um, it is inflation plus three. And even though you would say that it's a low weighting in inflation-linked bonds, we have actually been increasing our exposure to inflation-linked bonds. Basically, we see the risk of a stagflationary scenario, low growth, high inflation scenario playing out in our, our economy. And to bring more protection into the fund, we think inflation-linked bonds is um, a good asset class to be in. So we have been up weighting our exposure there and we definitely prefer inflation linked bonds to nominal bonds. Um, I, I suppose the problem there is that real yields are at historic low levels and we don't want to go too long duration in the fund and it's very difficult to find real yields in excess of 3% in the short end, which is restricting our, um, increasing our exposure to inflation linked bonds. But we do definitely like inflation linked bonds as an asset class. Bronwyn, uh, when you look at, you're talking about real uh, interest rates, the real interest rates environment, we're actually sitting just in, into negative real interest rates. Uh, yes. Give us an indication of how you are managing this right now um, and what kind of numbers do you foresee going forward given the fact that inflation is set to rise and interest rates are set to okay. remain the same? Yes, Elaine, it is a, I mean, it's very difficult for the fund at the moment. Um, as I've mentioned, again, we target inflation plus three, and with real yields being at negative levels, it almost means that we need a yield pickup of around 3% to make sure we beat our benchmark. But I suppose the objective of the fund is to beat inflation over a rolling three-year period, and we do believe that real yields will revert back to historic norms if the MPC follows an inflation targeting mandate as they should. Um, so while it may be hard in the interim, um, another objective of the, of the fund is obviously to beat um, the competitors in the fixed interest varied specialist space. Um, and we will continue to focus on, on doing that. 
Gwen, yeah. Yeah, Bromel, what's the state of the SA credit market like? I mean, not the, not the big companies, Anglo-American, you know, SA domiciled players issuing market into, in, issuing paper into the market. Is there any liquidity? Well, Do you think this is going to grow? I mean, it's a definitely a growing market, um, and it's also a very, it's an opportune time for issuers to come to market because, as we've spoken about, about uh, real yields are um, at negative levels. So for them, it's very inexpensive to issue in the market. Um, from an investor perspective, though, credit spreads are at historic lows, and we actually find the credit very expensive, hence why I've been... Um, trying to limit my local exposure and go into the offshore space where yields are far more attractive in that space. So we would, we would say that credit spreads are at historic low levels and that they should be normalizing over time. Um, there's obviously excessive demand for credit which is, which is keeping spreads at, um, we think, unnaturally low levels. Biggest uh, portion with regards to asset allocation within this fund is uh, floating rate bonds accounting for around almost 42% um, of a portfolio. Yes. Um, you were talking about uh, increased weighting in, in certain areas. Are you planning to downgrade your weighting in floating uh, rate bonds? And we know that they're linked to the JI bar rates in a sense. Yes. Um, all, I mean, all float, floating rate bonds mean is that there's limited interest rate risk because the coupon floats with the repo rate in the economy. So that's exactly what we've been trying to do in the fund, is limit interest rate risk in this very volatile environment. Um, and so we have been upweighting our exposure to floating rate bonds. I don't see this changing anytime soon. Um, probably my main focus is to increase um, the limited volatility type assets with safe yield pickup. Um, so that we can generate consistent positive returns for our investors and continue to do so. Bronwyn, at what level would you consider buying duration? In other words, what should, let's say, the 10-year bond go to in South Africa to a level that you would deem to be fair value? Um, I mean, it's difficult to give an exact yield, but I mean, I would say that we base all our valuations on a global valuation model, which essentially is made up of US Treasury yields, the inflation differential, and the South African sovereign spread. spread. So um, at the moment, you know, even though um, on that basis uh, our bond market isn't looking that expensive, it is actually looking like there may be a bit of value in our bond market, we, we just think, given the whole Eurozone issue playing out, there's going to be more volatility in the interim, and we need to limit that volatility for the type of investor that in this fund that doesn't need um, consistent um, or, or long periods of negative, negative drawdown periods, which could, could actually continue to play out until the whole Eurozone issue is, is sorted. So it very much depends on our actual valuation model at the time, um, you know, I think that the bond market is actually looking slightly more cheap, and I have been starting to increase my exposure to fixed rate bonds, but in the shorter end of the curve. Um, obviously, bonds have sold off since the repo rate announcement on Thursday, so there is some opportunity there, but very limited, um, you know, um, portions yeah. of the fund will will be going into fixed rate bonds at this time.